You probably know the burger franchise I work for. You've likely eaten there before. As have most people you know. We're international. And these days, much of our growth comes from franchises. Popping up in different countries around the world. I never knew why the burgers tasted so unique. But I'll admit, I suspected there was something wrong. Not for any one reason in particular. There were just a lot of little things. The way our CEO smiled, for example, when he said in our board meetings that our hamburgers were 100% beef. No added fillers or other ingredients. A few of the other executives shared knowing smiles with him. And I couldn't help but ponder to myself, how could that be possible at our prices? I didn't want to look into it. I'll admit that now. I have a sweet gig here. A nice, comfortable life. I've been with the company so long and I've been promoted so many times that I have developed a cabal of underlings and yes-men who do all of my work for me. I've got assistants and secretaries, interns and protégés who do whatever I tell them to and thank me for the privilege. I can literally sit at my desk all day and watch Netflix while sitting in the most comfortable reclining desk chair imaginable and make obscene amounts of money while doing it. But that can get boring after a while. And I decided to get out of the office for a day. I was in one particular plant, our largest, doing an impromptu walkabout. It's not something I've done in my many years with the company, but with my clearance level, nobody was going to say anything. I went through the motions, not really looking for anything in particular. I was just trying to get out of my office for a little while, go back to my roots. I had once started off in a meat processing plant very similar to this one, so going back there was a bit nostalgic for me. The folks at the plant were astonished to see me there, since they recognized my name as one of the top executives. It's one of the perks of being upper management. You don't have to explain your presence to people. You don't have to phone ahead or make appointments. You can just show up unannounced, and they'll be delighted to see you. When I asked to see the meat, what was going in before processing, the plant manager gave a skeptical look. Meat? Yeah, you know, 100% beef, right? With our masks on, it was impossible for him to read my expression. He probably thought I was giving him a knowing smile like the ones worn by the few executives in the board meetings who knew the truth. He began to laugh hesitantly. I followed suit, trying not to play my cards too soon. I was curious to learn the truth, in retrospect. He broke into a hearty laugh, and I joined in. A hundred percent beef. Yeah, right. Classic. All right, come on, I'll show you the pit. He began to walk towards the other end of the plant, and I followed. We found an elevator that brought us down to a sub-basement, ten floors below ground level. We got off there and began to walk down a corridor that extended the length of several football fields. It took me a while to realize that the walls were very subtly curved as if we were walking around a massive circle place was like a particle accelerator that was the size of a city. After walking for what felt like hours, we arrived at a locked door with a keypad. He punched in a number, which revealed another hidden access panel. The man swiped his card, did a quick retina scan, and used his thumbprint to unlock the door, which opened with a hiss. He went inside, and I was amazed and horrified at what I saw. 
There was a dark pit below us that was immense, stretched on for a great distance. It was like a grand canyon of what appeared to be concrete hidden beneath the earth. Inside the pit were innumerable dead bodies in varying states of decomposition as far as the eye could see. The smell was horrendous, like nothing I had experienced before. Acrid and eye-watering in its awfulness. And there was a sound as well, a steady droning buzz. The man pulled down his face mask, and below his nose his face was not human. I realized then this was not a man standing before me. I saw that the top half of his face was just a well-constructed mask. His real skin below that was like that of a lizard, scaly and green. When he spoke, I saw that his teeth were small, numerous, sharp, and pointed. We've made good progress this week. You know how it is, though. They're getting pretty paranoid these days. It's getting harder and harder to lure them out. They like to stay inside where it's comfortable. Our Tinder accounts still bring in a steady supply. But the Uber drivers are telling us they can't get away with stuff like they used to with these new safety programs in effect. Regardless, we're still managing to skim a lot of net product. He then wanted to show me things down below. And I followed, trying to conceal my mounting horror. We were being invaded, and they were slowly killing off the population and feeding our species dead to the rest of us, or so I thought. As we got down to the lower levels, I came to realize what the burgers are really made of. Perfect timing, he said as I watched through the viewing windows to our right. The floor holding all the dead bodies rose up, revealing a grate beneath. The entire thing began to shake back and forth quickly. For a second I thought to myself, Is it snowing in there? But then I realized what was falling from the steel grate above. What was raining down from the massive pile of dead bodies. Maggots. Millions upon millions maggots. They fell down and I realized suddenly what that horrible buzzing noise was that I'd been hearing since we had entered the huge space. It was flies. A horror of them, innumerable. The blood and guts and decomposing flesh of the people above leaked through the grate as well, raining down and coloring the maggots red. They writhed on the steel floor that extended for as far as the eye could see in every direction. We'll let this batch dry out under the heat lamps for a while. Then it'll go up for further refinement and seasoning. You know, the usual. He started on with some small talk, and I tried to maintain my composure and not vomit. But it was difficult. The smell was becoming very overpowering. The whole shaking a bunch of dead bodies and stirring them up, knocking their decomposing bits loose, really didn't make matters any better. Eventually, he led me out of the pit and back up to the entrance. I was so grateful to get out of there that I could have hugged him had I not been so horrified of what he really was. I really wish I could tell you which burger chain I work for. But if I do, I'm pretty sure they'll figure out who I am. I'm already getting nervous that they know I found out the truth. Yesterday, in the board meeting, the CEO made one of his little jokes about the beef again. And a few more executives joined in with knowing laughter. I'm starting to think I might be the only one left. Does anybody know any good vegetarian recipes?